In this video, you will learn how a Neo4j's causal cluster's fault tolerance is managed using a quorum for a cluster. When you configure your systems for Neo4j causal clustering, you can specify two properties for each system in the cluster. The minimum number of core servers needed to start the cluster, and the minimum number of core servers needed for the cluster to be operable for fault tolerant updates at runtime. A best practice is to use the same number for both these settings. In this presentation, you will see how a cluster's fault tolerance is managed. Quorum is defined as the majority of core servers. Quorum needs to be maintained in a cluster so that core servers can vote for a leader and can also vote out core servers that have failed or lost their network connection. A leader is required for a cluster to be operable for updates. In this configuration, the runtime and formation values are both 5. This means that, in order for the cluster to be in a started state, 5 core servers must be running. This cluster is operable because at least 3 core servers, the quorum, are running. Provided a cluster has quorum, update transactions against the cluster are supported. If one of the core servers shuts down, the cluster is still operable because at least three core servers are running. If a second core server shuts down, the cluster is still operable because at least three core servers are running. If a third core server shuts down, quorum has been lost and the cluster is not operable for updates and no leader can be elected. At this point, at least one of the core servers that were originally part of the cluster must be restarted if the cluster will be operable again. Let's look at a different configuration where formation is 5 and runtime is 3. With this configuration, quorum is 3 when the cluster starts, but quorum could go as low as 2 for this cluster to still be operable. Suppose one of the core servers loses its connectivity to the network. Because the cluster meets quorum, the remaining core servers vote this core server out. Quorum is still 3. Suppose another core server loses its connectivity. At this time, the cluster still has quorum and can vote out the second core server. But from now on, quorum is now 2. If one of the core servers that is part of the quorum shuts down, the cluster is still operable for updates because quorum of 2 is still maintained. But, if another core server shuts down, the cluster loses quorum and the cluster is now inoperable for updates. Again, at least one of the core servers that were originally part of the cluster must be restarted if the cluster will be operable again. For most deployments, setting runtime and formation to 3, which is the default, is sufficient. This type of configuration will enable the cluster to be fault tolerant if a single server fails. For some critical deployments, setting runtime and formation to 5 is used. This type of configuration will enable the cluster to be fault tolerant if two servers fail. With five core servers, however, you must be aware that updates to be propagated to all core servers will take longer than a cluster with three core servers. That completes our look at how a cluster's fault tolerance is managed using a quorum for a cluster.